all of you here we welcome you join an webinar on topic ethics in research publication organized by iesra with collaboration of innovative publication if you have any problem to access the audio and video so both and uh, uh, make an question in the question box i hope all of the attendees knows about uh, innovative research, research and the scientific foundation and uh, innovative publications also so uh, today topic we, we are going to start the webinar now and today's webinar uh, is divided into three sections one is introduction a short introduction to icsr innovative publication and dr chandra shekhar uh, who is the key presenter speaker today and the second session is question and answer session so if you have any question ask them in a question box at the bottom you have on a screen we will try to answer as many as unique questions we can if someone we could not answer your question due to time constraint then please email us your questions we are very much happy to reply all the questions then last section is vote for thanks so now we start our webinar and the first session that is introduction session so, uh, i would like to introduce the innovative publication first of all uh, myself nikita pandey uh, i am the host of the webinar today and uh, uh, i am from innovative publication thing uh, publisher in a medical dental nursing pharmacy and uh and allied sciences so innovative publishes high quality peer review research articles open access research articles in the all specialty so you are all requested to go to uh, www.itinnovative.com for the more information uh bubbly are you able to hear now okay then uh, i will inform you about innovative education and scientific research foundation also um so uh it is the um, it is a society educate innovative education and this uh, scientific research foundation is a non profit organization and working with a goal to help researcher fraternity to disseminate their research globally by publishing in peer review journal by presenting in conferences research talk seminar webinar etc the main aim of innovative education and research foundation is to promote scientific research globally and provide a platform to the community that tends to improve the visibility of their work internationally iesrf at present have a association of more than 3000 member for more information and details please go to our website www.iesrf.org and become a member to get exclusive benefits now i would like to introduce dr chandra shekhar r who is the key speaker and he is currently working as a teaching faculty researcher and assistant clinical uh, uh clinical research coordinator in department of pharmacology at institute of medical science and research center mangalore he is awarded as a best outgoing first graduate in pharmaceutical he is already um, uh, honored as a member of scientific Commun uh, committee in the organization 
biological sciences and editor in chief in the international journal of comprehensive and advanced pharmacology he has more than 75 publication in national and international journal and authored for 15 books for medical and paramedical students i would like to request dr chandrashekhar for sharing his knowledge about ethics in research publication thank you sir thank you sir please enable the slide sharing thank you sir enabled sir yeah can able to see the screen yeah. yes sir yeah. we we'll start okay good evening to everyone welcome to this uh, webinar on ethics in uh, research publication and i hope uh, after the end of uh, this session i'll be taking some information regarding the ethics in research publication so we will just move on directly to the topic what is ethics in research to start with a very simple thing okay now what is such a simple sentence finding something right now what is research is not as simple as that what you found in search it's a studious inquiry or examination aimed at the discovery and the interpretation of facts the revision of accepted theories or laws in the light of new facts or practical application of such new or revised theories or laws that is research right what is publication it is dissemination of your findings to the scientific community now, why to publish why because a paper is an organized description of an hypothesis data and conclusion intended to instruct the reader if your research does not generate papers it might just as well not have been done means so if it wasn't published it wasn't done isn't it but nowadays why we have to go for publication why either to get job those who are already employed just for promotion isn't it for new employee they are go to job so they will ask what is your experience where are your publications those all employed they ask for promotion if you want to promotion you have to get a publication or if demanded by the institution or organization for inspection is it they will ask next year there will be inspection and you should have this much number of publication only for these demands we go for publication so a famous says goes publish or perish you can see the cotton there he didn't publish so he perished isn't it what is ethics the branch of knowledge that deals with the moral principle and practices in any field is called ethics what is publication ethics application of ethics in publication now the question arises what ethical problem could there possibly be with this publication we have never heard of this yeah there are some ethics we will see now we'll just go through some scenario you we'll see one scenario one you have just done a comprehensive experiment with 100 test cases of samples as you know 90 of those test cases of samples when just like your theory or a hypothesis said they would 10 cases did not for example if i showing some carcinogenic potential or cancer producing potential you don't know why you think the sample might have been contaminated or uh, maybe some other no reason now 
do you report this 10 cases or not because it affects the ultimate outcome of your research this is scenario 1 we'll go to scenario 2 you are the knowledge leading expert in your field and you are in the field for more than 15 years okay the research you discovered 15 years ago has made you famous and respected and brought enormous prestige to institution university and you hear that you have been nominated for the prestigious research award for your life's work later after few years you got just happen to see your data of previous experiment guess what your famous theory was dead wrong and nobody noticed it what now but you know scenario 3 you got a very good job with very good destination designation based on your experience and of course with good number of publication for only one post the first vacant later you got a call from the institution that your paper has got a complaint of publication misconduct by the editor or the publisher hence your appointment gets cancelled regulatory bodies like ugc rbhs or nci any other regulatory bodies after thorough checking of the documents they don't consider you for the specified post due to misconduct in publication now what about your job we have done very good research study it was funded by very highly funding agency like brs dpt or icmr and all or maybe some foreign funding agency and it was accepted and published in a very good journal with the high impact factor with a indexation means they have mentioned in the website later by some other means we came to know that the journal what we published the journal was a fake journal and the impact factor indexation what they mentioned in their website was wrong you don't know that now what about your publication and what you are going to answer for funding agency this scenario report Now you can see some of the press releases in the newspaper cuttings you can see most of things came in new york times it might have come in some of the newspapers but you may not not have noticed that more science more fraud a sharp rise in the retraction from cause for reform or mid professor sack for fabricating data so, so many things they have came in newspaper but many of you not noticed that but it is in the limelight now we'll come to the scientific misconduct it's nothing but falsification fabrication plagiarism or plagiarism whatever you pronounce or other practices that seriously deviate from those that are commonly accepted within the scientific community for purpose conducting and reporting research that is called as if it deviate that so scientific misconduct can be negligence carelessness and citation bias what is this anybody heard about this now this is simple a failure to adequate review the literature on a topic before research lack of candor or completeness in describing one's research methods presentation of the data that are based on faulty statistical analysis citation of articles without having read the primary sources and selective citations of only those articles that support a particular point of view maybe only your research and selective citation to enhance one's reputation epitomized by self citation you are giving reference of your own article not from other articles now what is the effect of this negligence carelessness and citation we will see we will see the effect we will go very simple manner you can see here it may lead to type one error or it falls for us false positive you can see in the patient you are pregnant but the patient is whom the male this is called as type 1 error now we'll see what it fits with this arrow mark okay say so say possible now is a very hot topic covid 19 coronavirus now they are doing some vaccine trial when they did the trial it show that vaccine is not effective for what you got the results because of negligence carelessness and citation by us the result is showing effective you just submit this document to the government and they release this back 
passing to the large population. What is the loss? Because people are getting a vaccine, but the disease is not getting cured or prevented, isn't it? So it's a waste of source, waste of money, waste of time. This is called as type 1 error or false positive. We'll see the next one. It may lead to type 2 error, false negative. You can see here, a female is pregnant here. And doctor is diagnosing as what? You are not pregnant. What's the effect? Just see the arrow marketing. Vaccines for COVID-19. Actually, vaccine is effective. But even results are showing it's not effective because you have done some negligence or careless. And what are you are losing? You are losing a very, very potent vaccine that could have prevented COVID-19. Now, it's a very hot topic, isn't it? You want a vaccine to come as early as possible because you're all in stay home, isn't it? So you want freedom. So you, if you avoid this negligence, carelessness, you can come out of this type 1 and type 2 error. Redundant publication. Have you heard about this? Redundant publication? It is also called as duplicate publication. It is publication of a paper or a research but substantially with one that has already been published elsewhere two articles share the same hypothesis, results, and conclusion. The authors are trying to reach the readers who may not be familiar with already published article, especially if it is in other language, such as Chinese, Russian, or sometimes paper, same paper may be occurring in two different journals. People may not be knowing that. Example, you can see one common example I'll give you, one simple example, a study was conducted of all published papers to access the efficacy of a drug called as pondansetron. It's an anti-emetic, 5 to 3 antagonist, anti-emetic. It is known to be efficacious in post of nausea and vomiting. When they did some study, even they came to know, it was observed that 17% of the published paper was duplicates, in which 28% of the patient data was itself is a duplicate. This led to a situation in which the efficacy of the drug was increased by 23% by analysis itself, not during the actual study. Just by analyzing, it was increased because they were using the same publication. So, if the results were taken into account two or more times in a meta-analysis, you know what is meta-analysis? So, analysis of so many articles. If you could do that, the results would be unreal and not valid. So, what to do? Avoid negligence and carelessness. Be careful while doing study and writing article. Avoid citation bias, including frequent self-citation. Be careful about duplicate publication and be transparent in research and publication. Very, very important. Many of you heard about this plagiarism or plagiarism, but we need to know a bit more about this. Very, very important topic. Plagiarism ranges from unreferenced use of others' published work and submitted under a new authorship of a complete paper, either in same or sometimes in a different language. Plagiarism can be copying of the data from somebody else's work, words, phrases, ideas, concepts, or any other thing without giving appropriate acknowledgement or cited with the reference. Sometimes we go for self-plagiarism. I have done a previous study. I'm doing one more study. I'm giving the reference of my previous study. So in all my articles, I'm just giving the references of my own articles. This is called self-plagiarism. The verbatim copying or reuse of one's own research or publication in the next future articles. This is called self-plagiarism. Now, remember, an author is not allowed to reuse previously published material when rights have been assigned to publisher. Hence, authors are assigned to sign corporate declaration form. Most of you already this, isn't it? And use of previously published work without permission or without citing reference is a violation of copyright. Very, very important. We can see one of the notification in New Delhi, 23rd July 2018. So, what you have mentioned in this objective. To create awareness about responsible conduct of research, thesis, dissertation, promotion of academic integrity, and prevention of misconduct, including plagiarism in an academic writing among students, researchers, and staff, very important. The objectives of UGC. To establish institutional mechanism through education and training to facilitate responsible conduct of research, thesis, dissertation, 
promotion of academic integrity and deterrence from plagiarism and to the system to detect plagiarism and to set up a mechanism to prevent this plagiarism and also i think first time many of you are hearing this punishment punish a student researcher or staff of higher education institution hei committing the act of plagiarism now we'll see what this goes so you may ask can i write a research article with zero percent plagiarism the answer is no then then what there are some levels of plagiarism penalties and punishment for students starting research as given by the guidelines of ugc we'll see what they tell is each research institution could have following committee you can see here departmental academic integrity panel and institutional academic integrity panel department means it's for only departments like you have department of physiology anatomy pharmacology like that you have department so here the head of the department will be the chairman there will be a member senior academician from outside the department to be nominated by the higher education institution or a person well versed with anti plagiarism member also should be there in this department academic integrity panel this is for dai one institution should be there for institutional academic integrity panel a i a i p the chairman can be pro vc vice chancellor d senior academician of the gi a member senior academician amar upper from the chairman and member one member nominated by the head of the gi and one more member same like uh, the departmental one a person well versed in the anti plagiarism field so here we have a two years tenure they can be reelected here we have a three years they they are the one who are dealing plagiarism but the common thing is the chairman of the dap and iap shall not be the same and once any complaint come to dap they will investigate within 45 days they submit the report to the iap and that iap will take a decision but hiding any complaint this should be dip or iap is also an unethical remember this so you may ask question now you want to know about the penalties and punishments as related to this dip and iap you can see here suppose you have the written article and if there is a similarity if it is we yeah, are we can see the levels of plagiarism 0 1 2 3 where you grade it zero means similarity is there but only up to 10% so they will choose no penalty no penalty either for students or staff or researcher but if it is 10 to 40% for students they will tell to revise and resubmit in 6 months but for faculty they will tell to retract the article or withdraw will come later what is this the reaction if the level of plagiarism is 40 to 60% for student will be debarred for one year is act as a fail isn't it but in case of staff they will be asked to uh, withdraw the transcript should be denied right of one annual increment and also they will not be allowed to guide any student of mphil or phd or any other student for a period of two years the right will be taken back if the level of plagiarism is about 60% the student registration will be cancelled remember this if you are doing mdms or whatever it may be including phd for faculty it is above 60% same as above what is saw and plus they will be denied for two annual increments suppose if anybody find out there is a repeated plagiarism for student there will be one higher level of the punishment as we mentioned previously about that as instituted by the iaip for faculties a discipline action will be taken and they may be suspended for a period of 6 months to 1 year depending on the recommendation and penalty in case where the degree suppose somebody has published and he has taken degree and went what they do they can put that degree in a temporary suspension the same thing can be done for the faculties if they have been promoted to some higher position they can be demoted is very very bad situation is it so try to avoid this plagiarism you can see exactly but if now uh, you can see one paper publication uh, guidelines given by the ugc the 9th august 2019 almost one year before they are telling here that ugc in 154 uh, 
543rd meeting held on 9th August 2019 up to two credit courses for awareness about communication ethics. Okay, so they are telling that that they should have some common course, pre PhD course that involves research and publication ethics (RPE). So you can see HRD ministry statement what they are shown here. Teachers to use jobs and student their registration if they are found lack of plagiarism. So very very serious misconduct. How to avoid this plagiarism? You may ask me. Is it not the case? Do an extensive review of article before writing a paper. Short quotes from a previously published paper article should be set up in quotation mark and original version should be cited properly. Permission to be requested when the last section you are going to reproduce from an other work and methods in literature review should be paraphrased because meaning of something written or spoken using different words especially to achieve related character. Now we come to see what is this research fraud. The research fraud is publishing a data or a conclusion that are not generated by experience or observation but generated by self invention or data manipulation by the researcher sometimes generating a data without even entering a lab or research area at least once we have seen some paper like this so the research part can be classification and publication what is classification you heard about this it is manipulating research material equipment processes omitting or adding data such that the research is not accurately represented in the research record, but made to appear significant in the research paper. This is called as falsification. Now, what is fabrication? It is intentional misrepresentation of research results by making up data such as that report in the journal or outright synthesis of experimental data or reporting experiments that were never conducted, sometimes referred to as dry labbing, more commonly called as cooked up. You would have heard this, you know, sometimes you are cooking up the stories. Like that, they were putting up the data. The basic difference you can see here fabrication is you have done the experiment, but you have manipulated. Fabrication, never done the experiment, but you reference the data as if it was done. That's called as fabrication. Why do you do this falsification fabrication of the data? Why? Why? An idea? Because my hypothesis tells for you and my results it's negative. Or twice, or I submitted my negative or positive result to my higher authority, and they told you change the data because you know they will not accept like that. They told, and I did either falsification or fabrication. Or you may ask, who knows about my falsification and or fabrication of the data? Who knows? Mm. There are few people. A reviewer expert in the field concerned to a particular institution or a journal will be knowing about this, or a well, was statistician attached to insulin journal, they will be knowing that you have either falsified or fabricated the data. They can easily catch you. Remember this. How to avoid this? The researcher should be honest in the work. Very important. And research administration should have as it were, some panels to verify and audit this act of misconduct. And some staff should go and monitor when the students or staff are doing the research. And you should always take a statistician opinion before you do the work, during, and even after the work. Finally, as I told, transparency is very important in the data. Now, come to the next topic undeclared conflict of interest. Now, in the research paper, in the methods, it is mentioned as you have taken ethical company approval, but actually, you are not taken. And, or you have done a study and you are giving the ethical reference of some other studies. This is wrong. Or sometimes a funded research study has been submitted, but you are not mentioning who has funded this research. Then if a reviewer or the editor will come to me about this, what they will do? The reviewer informs the editor about the Undeclared or undisclosed conflict of interest by the author. Then they thank the reviewer and say, You plan to investigate. So the editor will tell the reviewer, You plan to investigate. This reviewer will contact the author 
and express concern. You have not declared this conflict of interest. Try to do that. Authors gives all the relevant data and he submits the details. Then he thank author, but he will tell you have done a serious mistake. You have disclosed it initially only. Then the reviewer may suggest the editor to go for publication. Or else, if author denies conflict of interest, then again they will tell we have a, some policy. You have to sign the corporate form that there is no conflict of interest so that the general people will be on the safer side. Always that's why the general people ask you to write the corporate form and on conflict of interest is a, you will tell you to mention yes or no. If even after you provide the information, if the general reviewer editor is not satisfied with your answer of conflict of interest, then the paper will be retracted and the concern authority will be informed. Maybe any regular authority will be informed. Animal and human subjects violation. Conducting research study on human beings or patients before taking ethics committee approval or informed consent is unethical. And conducting animal studies without taking animal ethics committee approval is also unethical. So it is seriously considered unethical, including any pilot study. Sometimes we do small study before we go to last study. Then also we use some animals or some patients. Then also you should take this ethical committee approval. Remember that. Have you heard this salami slicing or salami publication? What is this? It is a process gradually reducing the size of particles by a series of small incremental steps or modification of corrections. Or a single study has been split to many articles. Why we do this? What's the reason? Because when a prepared article, it was nine pages. And the editor insisted that we accept article with less than six pages. Or to increase the number of publications from a single study, it was split into two or more. What impact it has on the publication? Isn't it? it impacts the quality of research work. So, how to avoid this salami slicing? Focus on quality, not on quantity of paper. If you get a publication in PubMed Index in the last focus, one paper itself in a for lifelong. Don't go for number of papers, go for quality of paper. Publication retraction. Already I told the withdrawal, same thing. So it is a retraction is a public statement made about an earlier statement that withdraws, cancels, refutes, or reverses the original statement. What is this? The retraction may be initiated by the editor of the journal or by the authors of the paper or sometimes their institution also. You see from facts of the above, example. The editor of two of the journal alerted a reputed bibliographic database when they could not validate the email address of the reviewers suggested by the authors upon submission. The concerned bibliographic database then conducted thorough investigation of all historical submissions from this group. Based on the evidence provided, the various editors under bibliographic database decided that retraction was appropriate in 26 cases where the peer review process had been compromised. In addition, in several cases, the authorship list has been changed without agreement with the editor or during gallery group correction. Now, after thorough investigation, the editor has concluded that the acceptance of this article was based on positive advice by many fake illegitimate reviewer reports. Sometimes author will be asked to suggest the reviewer. Here, the author has given the reviewer email address where he had an additional email address, two, three. So from his own email ID, he has given as a reviewer. So when they investigated, they came to know the reviewer is not actually reviewer. It was the author itself who is having a fake email ID and given as a reviewer. The reports were submitted from email accounts that are provided to the journal as suggested reviews by the author itself during submission of the article. Later, that famous bibliographic database retracted 26 accepted papers because of fake reviews published between 2014 to 17. Now, if a paper is retracted in the journal, it will be there on the record. 
and it will be appear like this retracted paper will be there but they'll put a stamp like this retracted so it is having a black mark remember this i just masked this because of the copyright problem what impact it has on the retraction see a research paper retraction by an academic journal sends a clear message the validity of the paper has been brought into question because the retraction of article remain on the record is that it will be on the record with the journal database it has a potential to do long term damage to a researcher or even a journal reputation very very important the fellow researcher sometimes he may be referring your paper previously but he don't know the receipt retracted but he is quoting the same reference in further articles so it leads to excess loss of time and effort isn't it the common reason for retraction of article scientific misconduct has already been mentioned like plagiarism errors uh, concurrent publication all those things even suggesting a wrong reviewer so retraction may be initiated by the editor or can be by the author who is very honest or maybe by the panels already told the agent ie ip based on the complaint why to retract why to retract if there is a it is human error by collecting data or classification of errors and all or if there is any statistical mistakes if it is not uh, unverifiable then you can go for retraction or if anybody has done intentional academic misconduct then also they can go for retraction like falsification fabrication all those things we told so it says serious misconduct for this reason the grounds of retraction should be very very clear when distinguishing between whether it is acceptable human error or intentional academic misconduct now we have a committee on publication with scope it's called scope so they tell every single case of fraud and misconduct reduce publication confidence abuses the use of public and charitable funds and causes insult and frustration to mass majority of the careful and honest researchers this is very very important can see you can go to the website and see committee on publication this so we have some 10 points here you can see allegation of misconduct all this is mentioned here you can go to this website and get all the details then now who will pull the trigger of retraction who will pull because what is the problem here the decision is not always straight forward as it might seem because there will be disagreement between the authors and editors as to whether the error should be addressed by correction or by full retraction the retraction of a published article or paper can be re uh, requested by an author who has uncovered an error so that the author can be on the safe side but most author will not do this but it is a serious misconduct moreover editor also is very concerned about the general reputation isn't it if he has one uh, uh, issue uh, or four issues per year and it has more number of uh, articles is retracted if anybody wants to submit their article to that journal they will be thinking why because this uh, journal is publishing only retracted articles isn't it so whereas the author is concerned about his or her personal or academic reputation so dilemma comes here however in both the case the concern is for shadow that retraction will cast over other work but fortunately or unfortunately editor will typically have the final say now everything we did now the last thing comes authorship fault this is a very very serious problem in any research field the international committee of medical journal editors states authorship has follows substantial contribution to the study concept design data acquisition analysis and interpretation drafting or revising revising the articles for intellectual content approve the final version agreement to be accountable for all aspects of research work related to the accuracy or integrity of any part of the work so any author could meet all these four criteria based on this an authorship can be first author held to have made greatest contribution for research corresponding author who takes the primary responsibility of you know writing the paper submitting revising all those things or the person can be both first and corresponding and co authors like second author third author they have done some minor contribution in the research work now see the on the other hand contrary unnecessary author we have three here ghost author guest author gift author 
many of you might have not heard about this ghost author ghost author occurs when an individual who has significantly contributed to and participated in the development of specific scientific work but is not listed in the name of author now is called as ghost why you become ghost author why the example you are done a study with somebody but you both had a difference of opinion in custom context turmoil for some reason and the other person has published the data without your name and you came to know while searching some other article that this uh, research work i have worked on this but my name is not there you become ghost author or sometimes an influential council com uh, company or industry or any party can offer the benefit of employees professional writers or agency to produce an article but they'll be over to somebody else the person who wrote will be ghost author in this guest author a guest author is someone who is named as an author but did not contribute in any meaningful way to the design research analysis or writing of a paper this simple we see who is a guest who is a guest you have experience a guest is someone whom uh, you know is visiting he she doesn't really live here but stays because of courtesy and forbearance tolerance of the host he she eats your food sleeps under your roof uses your hot water watches your tv in short avails all the amenities the host provides he she doesn't pay the rent or a water bill though that would have been transformed in her to what a tenant but in this case not because they are your guest why an author becomes guest author so guest author is somebody as i told is just visiting the project being written up never involved in heavy lifting of the project he she is availing all the amenities afforded by the association in print with the project and doing so because of the courtesy or forbearance of the host author so they become here yes now come to one more very very important who doesn't like gift gift card somebody who did not contribute in any way to research and writing but is included in the authors because they confer extra credibility on the article or they dominate or being higher authority give permission to do research a frequent example is head of the department or phd guy they tell you have to put my name in your article otherwise i'm not going to give you permission i will not sign your record i will not allow you to meeting or i will give absence all those things they may, they may threaten you so then they become a git talk why somebody becomes a guest or git talk as i told you dominant trait as in the faculty head of the department you should put my name because of this chair because of this chair financial contribution they tell you have prepared the article you have done the research but i know you don't have publication money because the generally says me but in dollars maybe uh, in the terms of rupees if you take 25000 30000 there you are know, some generous which comes higher in the dollar level so but this person is not going to publish because of financial so somebody will i will finance but put my name friendship sometimes you know, he is my friend i'll put his name courtesy dedication then also they will just credit the authorship for the effect of the sanker or what the effect say if you are a gift or guest author in somebody's article you will enjoy the benefit or somebody will enjoy the same in your article if they are guest gift or guest author but if there is ghost author in your article or if you are a ghost author in somebody's article what you have worked for then in either of the case a matter of sanking is conduct what a letter to the panels gap iap or publisher editor who are if they write a letter with a copy of the hypothesis in hypothesis they'll mention who are all the investigators working in this project if that copy they send that then it becomes academic misconduct you can't omit an author because who has worked in the research project but his name is not mentioned then also it go for retraction factors for and to why they they do scientific misconduct in general in this academic expectation there is a publication from past two years no publication in the department get the publication great desire for publication papers i have this publication personal ambition vanity desire for fame greed which is directly linked to financial some university will give money to publish articles in a very good index and impact fact they must remember that to get the incentives they go for publication more number of publication 
and lack of moral capacity distinction what is right and wrong that is unethical that's what we told what is right and what is wrong they don't know they go for publication what can be done are there any uh, way to prevent this scientific misconduct yeah providing research institution and education research institution by conducting webinar as we are doing now seminar conference see him in etc active monitoring and monitoring of all research create a zero tolerance very important clear and stringent punishment and uh, penalties for violation of the guidelines and clear system for reporting suspected case of scientific misconduct create visible oversight committee as a guardian for the panels to investigate the proceedings whether institution of or a journal should have the transparency uh, about this uh, zero tolerance and better mechanism for linking and updating papers so retracted paper won't get cited again and again as referenced and develop institutional standards for record keeping and education of research is all level of training you can just see the overview of this publication how is the percentage wise all this whatever i told it's according this for scientific misconduct if there are evidence of misconduct or fraud then prior to publication a paper publisher will usually contact and discuss with the author the clarification and if they are not satisfied the manuscript will be withdrawn or retracted if already published what they do they put that it has been retracted as well to or they mention the note of editorial concern or errata uh, or some corrections also has to be done and authors can be banned for submitting the same journal for a period of 3 to 5 years editor publisher may in some case provide information to higher authorities very very, very uh, serious if they write a letter to the funding agency or the government agency then they are going to cancel some of the registrations or even the designation some countries have government agencies like you can see in usa office of research integrity they are going to seriously uh, do investigation about this and misconduct everything is done now the paper is ready but i don't know which journal to send for publication you have to send them your research with good journal but there are so many fake journals how to find this how to find the fake journals the journal has no address or contact information other than the email id in the website the article listed it but no evidence of editorial board or reviewer panel the board seems to have some eminent scholars or researcher but they are too busy in their schedules they do, they can't do re a review of your articles and there's no mention of article processing fees so some initially they not give any processing fees once you submit the letter is accepted now pay this much of thousands or some dollars that is the secret they keep and there's no mention of peer review process at all and no basic submission requirements so simply you send within 7 days letter your paper is accepted you have to see all these things go and search but now you will ask me sir and take ethics research publication person by doctor can share is it directly downloaded from the internet by google search which of acknowledgement or newly prepared for this webinar get more information from all these links always publish your articles in index in bibliography database as mentioned below pubmed scopus articles medline we have given list of this consider publishing only in this index journal so it is valid right acknowledgement ip innovative publications private limited innovative education and scientific research foundation all the images and content from the respective source what have taken if any queries ask me you can see my email id whatsapp number or you can directly write to innovative publication or to icap international journal of competence and advanced pharmacology thank you maintain social distancing wear a mask sanitize hands frequently stay home stay safe thank you if thank any queries let me know we have 10 minutes for discussion thank you uh, thank you all, sir thank you all participants uh, if you have any query uh, please mention in the bottom box Uh, here uh, question answer option is there in the bottom of your uh, screen so just ask your question there uh, so uh, to dr chandra shekhar uh, there is three open question for you yeah so, yeah. yeah please go ahead uh, thank you 
yeah we also have uh, some other questions also we have got here i'll just uh, select the question and start answering now yeah so yet somebody has asked uh, in my uh, this one uh, what's up that what is an impact factor it's a very important question it's a uh, scientometric index that reflects the yearly average number of citations of the article so it's a very simple so what uh, they do is suppose you want to know the impact factor of a journal suppose in the journal you are finding out impact factor in the 2020 now see number of article published in 2018 and 19 between 2018 it has published about of all the issues about around 150 articles for example in a one year 2019 150 articles say for example so 2018 number of articles plus 2019 number of articles divided by total number of citations of the article published in 18 and 19 say for example if uh, we take up 125 in 2018 and 125 in 2019 so it becomes 250 so 300 by 250 300 total number of article published total citations 250 if we divide this we may get around uh, 1.2 so 1.2 is the impact factor so that is the impact factor so if you publish your article in a a journal which is having very good index in impact at least minimum one also it's a very good uh, research article that's what the answer for that so if uh, somebody is asking here where does the uh, inclusive data fall fabrication or falsification so there is a slightly overlapping here because your data is not conclusive that means you have done the experiment it is not conclusive so it falls under falsification that's the answer for that so it is uh, one more question is there if one published article in pubmed index and cited in further studies does it affect as a self plagiarism yeah very very uh, nice question it is see if you are quoting as i told any references you should give credit so if you are quoting your own also it doesn't mean that you can't quote your own article at all you can quote but not frequently and also you should give the actual references from where you are taken so self plagiarism is allowed is not is not i'm not saying it's not allowed but still you should give a proper justification and also if you are taking your own article to be referenced you should obtain the permission from the general editor or publisher because you already given the copyright to that person you should obtain a concern from that publisher or editor then you can go for referencing the same then uh, can we have a copy of presentation if it is okay from the speaker to share a copy thank yeah definitely we can give the uh, copy we'll send to the all those which is a person to their email id you can go to this yeah somebody is asking can we request a copy of slides so definitely we can give them copy of slides it's a universal no problem so you can get the copy of slides and uh, somebody has asked one more question here how to select a research topic very very important very important how to select a research topic see we do some uh, simple mistakes now suppose you are uh, giving a research hypothesis you give like this anti depressant effect of say some drug saraka indica anti depressant effect of saraka indica you just give the uh, in experimental animal models like the huge hypothesis and surprisingly once we get the data we are seeing that the drug really has anti depressant effect how because you already give the article title as or the hypothesis title as anti depressant effect you have made the data in such a way that it has anti depressant effect that is wrong first you should go in a neutral way like how we go to null hypothesis as there is no difference between this so if there is no difference then what you do you accept the null hypothesis hypothesis if there is a difference you reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis so you go like this to evaluate the effect or pharmacological or biological effect of saraka indica or ashoka on animal model of depression you go in a neutral way try to do the study take out the results see whether it has or not if it is having then go with the article title that it is having this effect if it is not having 
you give fair results that it's not having antidepressant effect if you give fair results definitely even the negative results have a same value than positive results you remember because somebody who want to work on the same project in future once they refer this article they see that somebody has done the experiment and they have proved that is not having any depression but they will not take it again otherwise simply you are wasting your time also and their time also it will not lead to any good conclusion so that's a thing then somebody has asked about uh, what's the difference between research and review article right see research article you are actually taking formation from the ethical committee scientific committee and doing the research either you may do prospective forward or retrospective review means Only published articles are there. You are taking the some of the important key points which support your title and putting in a reference. But fact is, review articles is very tough than the research because you need to have a lots of extensive review of the literature. And sometimes I have seen some review articles which will be having some fifty to seventy or even maybe hundred references. But for a research article. Uh, hardly will have some 25 to 40 references maximum but still research article has the upper hand over the review articles that's the answer and uh, somebody is asking uh, how to check for plagiarism very very see if you go to online google search you get lots of uh, links to check the plagiarism online free check is there sometimes you can buy the software but whatever it may be a good reputed journal will be having their own sophisticated software so if you send a article there they will definitely check the tag as ml they will reject or they will reply back to you so what you can do is if you are doing an experiment after you write the articles whatever you taken reference go to a statistician and tell them to check for the plagiarism they will have a very good sophisticated statistical software and definitely they will tell about whether it's a tag or not if it is there how to change that and what and all we can do to avoid this tag is and they will give in and out of the answer for that so that is about the answer for any other questions are there any other questions are there i am ready to uh, somebody has asked uh, how many authors can be there in an article this of the way i heard about this so usually i have seen uh, uh, i have a paper uh, where uh, we got for uh, 10 to 12 of a dozen authors but may not be 100 also but a dozen authors i think if uh, authors are restricted to 6 plus or minus 2 it will be good but don't go beyond 10 12 and all because anyhow if anybody is referencing that article you know after 6 authors they are going to mention as what at all after six authors they put at all so if you keep the authorship uh, numbers six or less than six it will be good and you know some of the institution also have some criteria for authorship like first author will be having this points like 10 points second author like eight points and further authors will be having some six or four points so based on that they give some increments or they may give consider for promotion or incentives so that also may be there so that is about the answer for this authorship number of authorship so i hope uh, maybe a uh, few more questions are there but uh, we have very time limiting time so what we can do is uh, yeah somebody has asked uh, do we have to publish only in ugc ke to fulfill our phd criteria see it depends on what your university has uh, asked for they will have some criteria that if you are publishing your paper you, you should have following indexation only then you just see your guidelines organization uh, have you see the guidelines after that you can go for what to consider some people will ask only ugc uh, index to general some people some university will ask about scopus index only so nowadays uh, most of universities going for scopus index so that's what you have to see for You say that there's a C grade. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, there are some C grade journals where the quality is very low. That's why I told you you need to select uh, your own journal, and you should have lots of discussion with uh, the other researchers who have published uh, valuable uh, uh, paper in uh, good journals. So you need to discuss with them 
take the suggestions then you can go for publishing because once you publish as i told very difficult to uh, take it from the, the website because still if, even if you retract also it will be documented as it is uh, told here one more question is there what's the difference between fabrication and falsification as i told falsification means you have done the study you got the result but when you put statistics it's not so significant so either you are adding or deleting the data fabrication means you have not done any experiment just sitting in your room and writing the paper and putting your own values you have never entered the lab that is false fabrication cooked up stories cooked up research that is false fabrication yeah sir how many references should be we consider for writing review paper or what's the criteria for selecting number of references this also depends on the journal also and your study also usually i have seen as i told uh, for a uh, review articles i have seen an article uh, with 50 to 75 references up to 100 references we seeing it depends on what is the, the, the title you have taken it depends on title so and the journal guidelines will tell restrict the number of references so sometimes the journal will give the guidelines based on the you can go because it depends on the editors and publishers Uh, what about the impact factor of the red sea journals? They show that the impact factor is so and so. While the quality of research and this journal is very bad. Yeah, yeah. That's why I told. Sometimes I told them they they should be uh, uh, very uh, difficult in sometimes you know uh, selection. So what I see is directly don't go for initial impact factor. First see the indexation. If it's a very good indexation, is there that itself is enough. impact factor yeah you have to consider later first see the index first they will ask for the indexation nobody will directly ask for impact factor impact factor is very important for unicef i know that but first uh, criteria to be considered is indexation then go for impact factor that's what uh, thank you sir there is a huge number of uh, question on the live streaming whatsapp what what i can suggest is let them uh, uh, mail their questions to uh you know my personal mail or for i ip publication mail then definitely i will give answer to all the queries as far as possible yes, uh, because lot yeah because lots of participants are going to with the live uh, session from website uh, facebook also okay. so they have uh, yeah they have a uh, queries there so i write uh, your uh, i share your uh, details sure 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 yeah uh, sir lots of uh, participant wants to have the ppt uh, also so can we share if you you, you can you can share the ppt say let, let them see because uh, many people man, they want to just uh, see it in a one more uh, revision so let them see and let them get the information everything is there so uh, i'm happy uh, to share my slides and, and anyhow uh, if uh, researchers are getting benefit from that i'm happy no need to worry about that it will be available you uh, can share thank you that. thank you sir and to all the participants uh, attendees i uh, request you for the uh, your or uh, other question you just email us and dr chandrashekar are directly uh, you can email us on our mail id also shared here uh, so now uh, we can go ahead for the vote of and uh, and uh, so sir it's my privilege to have been asked to prepare the vote of thanks for this uh, webinar on the ethics and research publication uh, me myself nikita pandit on a behalf of innovative publication team extend the very heartly votes of thanks to honorable speaker dr chandrashekar r uh, to uh, share his uh, knowledge about very on a very important topic of research and i must thank to all of attendees sir for your patience uh, you may all uh, contact us on our email id provided there and go on the website uh, www.iesrf.org for more details thank you all thank you yeah okay okay uh, we just share and feedback form uh, after the um, webinar so we look after for your feedback uh, thank you all have a great day